Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram all dominate our lives, the golden or problematic triangle of online discourse and connectivity. Whilst we can think back to alternatives that gained popularity in earlier eras of the internet, be that MySpace, BBM, or Tumblr, few could or can overwhelm the weight of the big three. But one company tried in the 2010s. That company was WWE. Yes, I'm not making this up. There was once a social media site dedicated for wrestling fans. But the reason you probably can't remember it is because it didn't even last two years before closing at the beginning of 2011. But there is still some fun to be had in looking back. Welcome to Retrovision, where I deep dive into the depths of internet lore and dig out some forgotten memories from the internet's many, many, many past lives. He has been so aggressive. In an announcement proclaiming that our fans are the stars of the WWE Universe, World Wrestling Entertainment launched a new interactive online community hosted on their main website. It encouraged loyal fans to create their own profile and interact with others. But on top of that, WWE talent at the time would set up their own profiles at launch, with fans able to send their favorites direct messages. Mom, get Things that were popular on the site were the live chats that were hosted by WWE Hall of Famer Howard Finkel, who also wrote weekly blogs. Other interesting features also allowed fans to create WWE highlight reels of key moments. Live forums became the most popular part of the site, active during pay-per-views and big WWE events, allowing fans to respond and connect in real time as matches were taking place. WWE.com had previously been trying interesting things online. In the early 2000s, they launched by this, a webcast that interviewed wrestlers about the previous week's events. What made this show unique was it attempted to pull back the curtain on the predetermined and scripted nature of WWE, giving airtime to the very personal and emotional feud between Matt Hardy and Edge. This was one of a few forays into online content, and given the rise of live stream on social media now, this was pretty new for its time. WWE integrated online voting into one of their pay-per-view shows, Taboo Tuesday, which then became Cyber Sunday. Fans were asked to vote on stipulations, matches, and more, which meant the wrestlers themselves actually wouldn't know the outcome till the vote was announced. I'm sorry, but I am so confused. Before this, when the WWE was called the WWF, the company aimed to be at the forefront of online content with WWF on AOL, with WWF.com. The site would produce live chats as well as pre and post game shows. What's the problem? Now the logic behind building a social media platform as the boom was beginning to emerge and discourse was going to our keyboards and our thumbs was not a ludicrous concept. One of the issues was the independent wrestling forums that had already existed. The very popular figure for Weekly, which eventually merged with Wrestling Observer around the time of the WWE Universe launch, had been hosting online forums for years. What those forums did was offer fans a more raw and authentic experience. Also meant it was not limited to the WWE, with discussions straying into other global wrestling companies like New Japan Pro Wrestling or the meteoric rise of the UFC, which pulled a lot of wrestling fans in too. It is also relevant to explore where the WWE was in the late noughties and why so many hardcore fans were turned off the product. In the late 90s and early 2000s, the WWE boomed in popularity due to an edgier, riskier and more violent product that was aimed towards an older demographic. That all changed with the emergence of John Cena, which brought with it a younger audience and with that, the product became less violent and more family friendly. Whilst this brought its own commercial benefits, the move to more PG content felt like a stifling of the interesting storytelling WWE once produced. WWE suddenly didn't feel cool anymore. It was an overly produced and sanitized corporate exercise. We can even jump beyond 2011 to prove this further with the way the company suddenly embraced YouTube, a site that had already grown exponentially and formed an independent community of creators who made content about wrestling without the WWE seal of approval. Later, it would be Twitter, ramming hashtags down viewers' throats, and so it went on. WWE soon became the adult trying to get down with the cool kids. Sup, dude appropriating what they had helped build in the first place. This leads to why the WWE Universe quickly fell flat. The problem was it had a lack of authenticity. 
with wrestlers posting very safe and cliched posts, which gave the impression it might not even be them posting it. Also, fans were starting to form more authentic communities on sites like YouTube and Facebook, where the YouTube wrestling community began to grow, and objective media forums and podcasts like the Wrestling Observer challenged the WWE's glossy perception. With WWE being the biggest game in town, there was a corporate tone to their approach, trying to appropriate the online forums that had grown organically before Facebook or Twitter emerged. Fans had already navigated to other places and those of a younger generation may not have even been allowed to go on social media by their parents. Yes, this was a thing. We didn't all get iPads from the moment we could walk. So rated off a strong graphic violence, nudity and language. As the history of the WWE Universe wasn't that vast, finding scraps of info about it was quite a challenge. I've been mainly leaning on Reddit threads of fans talking about what it was and why it faded so quickly. As recalled by some on the Reddit site, which was intended to be family friendly, soon became littered with inappropriate content with links to porn sites, with religion and politics also inflicting the site despite it not being about that. It is hard to know whether these incidents were just isolated or contributed to the eventual closure of the site. As a piece by Sportster in 2021 recalling the universe details, WWE Universe also allowed fans to post blogs on the platform, but some fans didn't use it the way WWE wanted them to. Instead of talking about the product, some people used it to attack certain people, share private pictures of wrestlers, or even try to sell their household items to other fans. Oh. I'm not buying that. The concept of social media sites turning toxic was not abnormal and would eventually be reflected by Facebook and Twitter. Tap out, dude! <laughs> tap out, tap out. But honestly, and probably more than anything else, WWE Universe just didn't interest enough fans. What did he say? Although the WWE is the biggest wrestling company in the world, it still is a niche and that is always going to have a ceiling on it. It also assumed that wrestling fans didn't already have an outlet to connect with others online, which by 2008 wasn't entirely accurate. WWE Universe ended on the 1st of April 2011 and merged a lot of the features into the main WWE site to appease the members who would remain active on the site. Expectedly, as everyone else did, WWE instead started focusing on producing content for Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. Oh well, there, there was this briefing called Tout. It's time for this old Tout to eat some crow. A year after the closure of Universe, WWE started promoting a new app called Tout. Tout allowed users to send 15 second videos, which were known as touts. But there was just one problem. It sucks. Like of other attempts at the time, Tout had the impression of being inauthentic and forced, with wrestlers put in front of camera to ram the product down fans' throats. They weren't having it. WWE ended their partnership two years later and due to that, Tout then closed, proving to be another failure to have control in their own social media app. Mr. Woo Woo. Even though these ventures failed, WWE did gain something from the online trials in the early period of a new decade. As we mentioned earlier, the WWE ventured onto YouTube and while some of the content felt cringe, one stood out. A mostly forgotten wrestler named Zack Ryder had begun to upload a new show to his channel named Z, True Long Island Story. The show poked fun at his lack of airtime on TV, opportunities to get over with the crowd and being stuck in a jobber role. Jobber in wrestling lingo means you lose all the time. These subtle digs at the company felt like a rare glimpse of a previous era of WWE which engaged a broader audience. Soon it gained enough popularity that WWE brought the show onto their own channel. On top of this, the Ryder Revolution jumped from online to packed arenas as fans pushed for Ryder to be given a significant push on TV. This led to Ryder winning the US title, teaming with John Cena and becoming one of the company's biggest merchandise movers heading into 2012. On his show too, he made himself the internet champion, something which stuck and only added to the organic growth and popularity amongst fans. Ring the bell, kitty. WWE soon fell in line with other brands. Instead of trying to create their own social media networks, they focused on growing their accounts on already established ones. This has led to the WWE now having almost 14 million followers on X, over 30 million on Instagram, 100 million subscribers on YouTube, and 26 million followers on TikTok at the time of recording. Three years after the closure of the WWE Universe, the WWE launched a new streaming platform called the WWE Network. Whilst this platform was not a social media site, it was a Netflix of wrestling with hours of content to delve into, live shows, archive footage, and tons of stuff for fans to enjoy. A decade later, the WWE Network will be merged into Netflix from 2025. Rather than creating an inauthentic version of something that fans already went to, 
they offered them something they didn't already have. That's why it was successful. The broader online wrestling scene has never felt stronger. Like Wrestle Talk, What Culture, Figure Four Weekly, Solo Monster, and more that cover the wrestling world 365 days a year. The WWE feels less like an awkward uncle trying to be cool and fit in, and now feels more comfortable in its social media skin building those accounts and now being able to promote a once again popular product. So the WWE Universe joins the social media graveyard of Google Buzz, Vine, Google Plus and MySpace. Please let me know in the comments if you remember the WWE Universe, were you a user of it? And remember to like and subscribe this video if you enjoyed it. What forgotten internet history should we cover next on Retrovision? Let us know in the comments.